Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the season of the Kent Football Show, kindly brought to you by Kent Reliance. We're here at Dilltown FC, the home of the hoops, and what a show we have for you today. My name is Kweku Afari, I'm your host. We're going to bring you everything you need to know about football in Kent. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Coming up in the show, we have interviews with Dilltown board member Charlie Smith. Maystone United goalkeeper Lucas Coverland about his incredible season so far. We go behind the scenes at the Kent Female Volunteer Forum with Kent FA's Rebecca Moore and England futsal player Emma Brown who spoke to us ahead of her Death Olympics competition. There's your moments of the match. Will your team feature? Harry Burgess chats to Matt Cloud and Craig G who between them have made over 900 appearances in Kent Sunday League football. Next, we head to the Kent County Cup referee appointment evening with Kent FA's Nick Dunn. We chat to New Dads United to find out more about this new initiative. We then head to the Merritt Under-15 Boys Plate Final for a County Cup match report. And finally, we have the ever-popular crossbar challenge with Herm Bay Ladies Under-18s. First up, we're here at the Charles Ground, the home of Deal Town FC, and I spoke to board member and lifelong Deal Town fan, Charlie Smith. Thank you for joining me, Charlie. Um, we're here at the home of Deal Town. Um, you were talking before about how you're a lifelong supporter of the club, and now you sit on the board as one of the directors. Can you talk about the differences that you've seen from when you were coming here watching Deal as a fan to now as one of the members of the board? Yeah, definitely. So I uh, I came here quite a lot with my dad when I was a kid. Uh, and as you can imagine, in non-league football around the 90s, there was 30 people and three of them were dogs uh, in the in the stands. So especially over the last, the last sort of few years, I think post-COVID and, and COVID especially, non-league football has dramatically changed. Uh, and we've seen our numbers jump from hundreds to 200s to 300s to just last night. We had 514 on a Tuesday night, uh, which is a little bit mad, to be honest. But um, but yeah, it's it's amazing. And, uh, and all those people that you wanted to always get involved have seemed to get involved and come and watch and uh, I think Deal especially has had more people come to the town and the town has grown so obviously that's helped and uh, thankfully we're having quite a good year we're, we're currently second and, and got to the FA Vars quarter final so people always like a winning team I guess as well so uh, so yeah it's easier to come down and support some wins. And on the topic of this season how confident are you that Deal can secure promotion? Oh god the manager's going to kill me. <laughs> um, I I believe in the boys. I, I definitely think they can get it over the line. We've got the games in hand, um, so so hopefully, yeah, we can we can do it. So I'm I'm probably ninety percent happy. But uh, but yeah, the the manager would say it's one game at a time, three three points at a time, especially. So, and in terms of your memories of coming to watch Dill, what's what's the best memory that you have in terms of coming? Maybe not to this ground. Maybe big days out that Dill have had, Dill Town have had. Can you tell me about your favourite memory as a Dill Town supporter? Yeah, I think I think anyone that's been a Deal fan for more than twenty years would say the Vars final at Wembley. I think that's a it's an unwritten rule. Uh, winning a national competition is is unbelievable. Getting to the final is unbelievable. But uh, I was there. I was eight. Uh, you probably wouldn't believe it now, but I was stood on a seat because I couldn't see, um, and I was with my dad. And yeah, it was an amazing memory. Thank you very much, Charlie. No worries. Thanks a lot, Charlie, and good luck on your promotion push for the rest of the season. If your club have a story to tell, then make sure you drop us an email at info at kentfa.com and we could be coming to you next. If you haven't heard about Lucas Coverland, you must have been hiding under a rock. He was one of the architects of Maidstone United's incredible run to the fifth round of the FA Cup. We caught up with Lucas to find out about Maidstone's incredible season so far. Hello, it's Jeff Davis at Gallagher Stadium. The site of Maystones United's fantastic FA Cup run. We're going to talk to the man who was magnificent throughout, Lucas. Let's see what he's got to say. Lucas, thanks very much for meeting with us today. Can you just tell us a little bit about your football journey? Thanks for having me. Oh, the football journey. Uh, the whole career football journey. <laughs> that's, well, a, that's a long one. Well, how did you find yourself <laughs> where you are today at Maystone United? What uh, was the, the, the key point? Yeah, I mean, uh, football journey is uh, not always the happy, you know. Like, there is always like up and ups and downs. Uh, nowadays, I find myself uh, very happy uh, here at Maystone. 
Uh, obviously, everything we've been achieving this season, uh, especially like in the cup run, uh, we still aiming for get the promotion uh, side. Um, I mean, it's a long um, way from from Brazil, uh, where I'm from. Yeah. So I've been quite quite few clubs. It's my eighth year in in England, and uh, hopefully it's not gonna stop uh, in only because uh, obviously um, my goal here is just go back to the league again and uh, prove myself, improve everyone that I can do it there as well. Growing up, did you ever watch the FA Cup in England? And did you ever dream that you would be a central part of a an FA Cup, one of the biggest FA Cup stories in nearly 50 years? Wow. Uh, did that ever happen? Did you ever think that? Uh, it's it's difficult to dream about uh, so specific, specifically as is in the FA Cup uh, run. Uh, obviously, uh, you watch the Premier League when you're younger and uh, the final stages of, of the FA Cup and then when you when you hear more about it and then the history like every single team in England has a chance to play in the FA Cup and obviously do the history so since my first uh, year in England I want to do like a big big run because um, obviously you want to play against the, the big um, big clubs uh, the Premier League clubs and uh, it didn't happen uh, this, this year but obviously the history that, that we made uh, with Maidstone and I think we we just in the history books uh, nowadays. Uh, everyone was just like so happy, so buzzing. And it's still hard to believe uh, everything that we achieved. Uh, again, everyone was just like uh, unbelievable on the day. Uh, helped very much. Uh, we can hear him, but what's it like to work for George Kobe as as the head coach of this team? Yeah, I mean, uh, the leadership that he has, uh, the passion that he has in football, the, the hard work that he, he's, he, he passes into the player, that, that passion, the encouragement, you know, uh, I think that everything just like helps, you know, on and off the pitch. It's not just like that. Um, you're probably going to be <laughs> hearing him screaming like on the back, uh, but that's how, how he is. He's, he's not just, uh, uh, again, like some people just say, like in front of the camera. Or everything uh, he's he's like this every single day. You know he's so passionate about football. Um, obviously, uh, Gaffa is a, a young Gaffa. Is still like he always says like I'm, I'm learning every single day, and uh, he learned with with us, and then we learn with him. So it's like a, a process that that we've been going. And obviously, I'm so glad to have him as a Gaffa today. Lucas, you was magnificent during the cup run. You've been, been magnificent today and we wish you all the very best for the playoffs. Thank you very much for everything. Thanks. Thank you. What a year he's having. Good luck for the rest of the season, Lucas, and good luck to the rest of the Maidstone United team. Now, in Kent, there are hundreds of female volunteers that are helping to shape the grassroots game. So we went behind the scenes for the Kent Female Volunteer Forum, supported by BAE Systems, to find out more about these inspirational volunteers. Let's have a look. We're here at the Ashford International Hotel for event three for the Kent Female Volunteer Forum. Massive thank you to VAE Systems for supporting us through our events um, and we're looking forward to a great night. What an inspirational event. So good to see so many female volunteers coming together and uniting and inspiring each other as well. If you're interested in joining the next forum, then make sure you drop Rebecca Moore an email at rebecca.moore at kentfa.com. 
Now, on the topic of inspirational women in football, Kent FA Youth Council member Finn interviewed England futsal player Emma Brown ahead of her Death Olympics competition. Uh, what are your career highlights? Oh, God, there's, there's so many career highlights I have. Um, I have to say, the Euro 2022 in Italy, and um, we got to the semi final and we thought, Germany again. Because before that, we got beaten Germany three times and they just kept beating us, kept beating us. And I thought, you know what? I thought we'd give it everything. And uh, finally, the first time ever we beat Germany in the semi final, we didn't just beat them, we smashed them 7 3. And then we got to the final against Spain and, uh, and we won 3 2. So yeah, we came home with a gold medal and we won the Euro, so that's my best highlight. The Winter Death Olympics are coming up. How are you preparing and how are you feeling for that? Uh, do you know what? I, do you know what? I feel good. I'm ready to go. Like, uh, so we, we had a draw the other day and we got like Germany, Poland, Kenya, and who's the other one? Poland, uh, Germany, Kenya, um, Turkey, so they're in my group. So yeah, I'm so looking for it. I just can't wait to get back in, get back on the court, play my national game. And the squad we've got now, we actually got a, such a good squad. I believe this, this team that like, we got a good chance. Obviously, we have to take it one game at a time. So yeah, so looking forward to it, and we are ready to go. How did you get into football? Ah, so I got into football when um, England said there was a trial for England death and it was futsal, but I never played futsal then. So that's how I started when I joined for the England death futsal team. So that's how, and that was like 15 years ago. So I've been playing futsal for 15 years. Great work, Finn, and good luck, Emma, and the rest of the GB team at the Deaf Olympics. We're all behind you. Next up, my favourite feature of the show. It's moment of the match. Does your team feature? Let's have a look. Some incredible moments there. I told you it was going to be good. Thank you to everybody who submitted an entry. And if you're interested in being involved in the moments of the match going forward, then drop us an email at info at kentfa.com. Now, Kent FA's very own Harry Burgess caught up with Matt Cloud and Craig G from Invicta Sunday Club, who between them have made over 900 Sunday League appearances to hear more about their journeys. Let's check it out. We're here at Invicta Sunday Football Club to speak to two very special players. One who's achieved over 400 games and the other whose 500 game is today. Let's see what they have to say. Hi Matt, congratulations on reaching 400 appearances. How does it feel to reach this milestone? Uh, it's quite an achievement. Yeah, I'm quite happy. It's sort of taken a long, long time to get there. But yeah, very happy. Hi Craig, congratulations on reaching 500 appearances today. How does it feel to reach this milestone? Uh, 500, that's quite a lot. It's taken 33 years, uh, but enjoyable. What is your highlight of your career so far? Uh, I think my highlight was last season. We managed to get to a cup final for the first time. Unfortunately, we lost, but it was an achievement getting there. To be honest, probably last year, when we, like Matt said, when we got into our first cup final down the Gallagher, uh, unfortunately to lose against today's opponents. Uh, we put enough effort in to actually win it, so that was a big disappointment as well. One word to summarise your career so far? Uh, eventful. Uh, it's been enjoyable. Brilliant. I'm, I'm glad you've enjoyed it and hopefully you enjoy the rest of it. Amazing stuff there, lads. Over 900 combined appearances at Sunday League level. My knees are just hurting thinking about it. If you want to get involved in the beautiful game but don't know where to start, then make sure you head over to our website, www kentfa.com now to be appointed to a county cup final as a referee is incredible recognition for all your hard work and dedication throughout the season so come with us behind the scenes to the kent county cup referee appointment evening to find out how the night went down 
Hi, I'm Nick, Referee Development Lead here at the Kent FA and we're here at the Village Hotel this evening to celebrate the appointment of 100 of our 2,000 match officials within the county. Tonight is all about recognising and rewarding those match officials who have been selected to represent the county at our 25 County Cup Finals. We've brought our cameras along so that you can have a sneak preview as to what goes on. So this evening is all about recognising and celebrating our match officials for their appointments for the Kent FA County Cup Finals for 23-24 season. Hi, I'm Ethan Carl. I've been appointed to the Under-14s Cup Final. Bearing in mind I'm only 15, this is a great appointment to be a part of and I'm really happy to be appointed to it. I'd like to thank um, the Kent FA for inviting me here tonight. Um, I was selected to referee the Women's Cup. Um, I feel extremely proud to have achieved that in my career as a referee and I'm really looking forward to the fixture. Yeah, really honoured to be uh, the referee of the Kent Senior Cup. I've seen a lot of excellent referees from Kent do this tournament so I'm honoured and excited to be part of that, that crowd. That's it for tonight's event. 25 cup finals have been appointed. 100 match officials will help support those finals. Our thanks to Paul Tierney from the PGML to support the event as well as the Kent FA wider staff team. Good luck to all those appointed and let's hope the ball runs kindly. Great stuff and congratulations to all the match officials on their upcoming appointments. If you're keen to become a referee, then make sure you head over to our website to find out more. Now, one of the reasons why I love football is that it provides people with a platform to do so much good. So we caught up with New Dads United to find out more about an initiative that's helping to unite new dads with the power of the beautiful game. We're here today on a windy day in Faversham. We're here for New Dads United, which is an amazing new project. Um, and let's speak to a few of the guys, a few of the people involved to find out a little bit more about it. I'm joined by Aidan, who set up New Dads United and the charity Dads Unlimited. So Aidan, do you want to tell us a little bit about the session and uh, what got you started? Yeah, so I basically became a dad uh, eight months ago to my boy Ezra and uh, yeah, it was kind of like loving the family life on a weekend but thinking actually are my football days over? Um, so yeah, just reached out on uh, social media to see if there were other people like me who also wanted to play and yeah, we got absolutely swamped with, um, with interest really, so yeah, it's been re really, uh, really positive. But, uh, Dads Unlimited, obviously you've got involved with New Dads United, so do you want to tell us a little bit about the charity? Yes, so Dads Unlimited is a charity that supports the emotional safety of men and those they care about. So we support males through two main services, which is the Domestic uh, Abuse Victim Support Service as well as the Family Separation Service. Um, so unfortunately, after family separation, fathers do experience a lot of difficulties and uh, challenges, especially around the mental health. So through the work we do, we uh, uh, we obviously support them with co-parenting, healthy co-parenting relationships. Um, we support them with their mental health, which reduces suicide, as well as obviously re reuniting them with their children and supporting them around that contact and child arrangements. So that's what we do. And we're very happy to, to be here with you guys. So thank you. We've had the opportunity to find out a little bit more about this project, New Dads United and speak to some fantastic people and watch a bit of the game. If you want to get involved and find out a bit more, then please look them up online and get in touch. Good work, New Dads United. What a great initiative. Now, you guys already know that I love a good match report, so come with me to Home Park, the home of Sheppey United, for the Merritt Under-15 Boys Plate Final between Rochester United and Ebbsfleet United. Here we are at Sheppey United for the Merritt Boys Plate Final. Uh, takes place between Rochester United and Ebsley United. Should be a good game. Two teams battled hard to get through to the final, so all to play for. Looking forward to a good game. Ball across to Slade. And nipping in to score. The opening goal is Corey Smith from close range. It's a 
an interesting ball. And here's Dominic Shard, who shows great strength to equalise. It's a good running from Hicks. It's a decent looking ball in. And Smith's there again. Corey Smith makes it 2 1. And Ebbs Fleet get their noses in front for a second time. Half time here in the Merritt under 15 boys plate final, and it's Ebbs Fleet United that lead Rochester United 2 1. Corey Smith scored early on for Ebbs Fleet before Dominic Shan equalised for Rochester, and on stroke of half time, Corey Smith added his second of the game to give his side a 2 1 lead. Still all to play for in a very entertaining game. Let's see what the second half brings. But. Very slayed. He's all the way through, and then it's bundled home. George Sprague got the final touch. A bad effort. Here comes the corner. And it helped on. Is it over the line? Yes, it is, says the referee. Ebbs Fleet United take the lead for the third time. Need to get the shot in. Can't do so. It's been worked down the right again. Hicks with a cross. Goalkeeper could only parry. And there was Mohit Khan to lift the ball into the roof of the net. Got to be careful, and that was a gift, and it's a gift that has been rolled into the net by Fabian Adamo. Yep, been cleared, bobbling around, and then the finish is applied by Dominic Shan. 5-3, it's probably too little too late. Another run forward from Shad. Ed's Fleet United triumph by five goals to three in a thoroughly entertaining game here at the Total Power Stadium. And it's Billy Balsam that gets his hands on the Merritt Kent Football Association under 15 boys plate. It's a big congratulations to Ebbs Fleet United. They have beaten Rochester United here at the Total Power Stadium by five goals to three. Uh, here, we're here with victorious manager Joe Belton following sides winning the Kent under-15 boys plate final. Just give us your thoughts on the game. It was a, a very tough game. Uh, could have gone either way. Um, we, we gave as good as we got and um, we, we didn't play as much football as I would have liked, but finals are always difficult occasions and... We, we ground it out in the end and, and managed to score a few goals. So, yeah, overall pleased with the boys' performance. But, yeah, just a relief to come away with a win. Yeah, no, well done. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Wow, what a game from both teams. Good luck to all the County Cup finalists on their big day. Now it's time for my favourite part of the show. You know what it is. It's the Cross Bar Challenge. Last time out, Russell got a very respectable five this time it's the turn of Herne Bay ladies under 18s. Can they beat that? Let's check it out. Hi guys, we're here for another crossbar challenge with Herne Bay under 18 ladies. They've got one minute on the clock. Let's see if they can beat the record score of five. I'll count you in. You've got five to beat, two's the low score, but aim for the high. Three, two, one, go. It's not a bad first effort. Good finish. There's one already. As quick as you can, get those balls back as well. We need one over this side. Oh, not bad effort. Oh, oh I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> right. Unlucky, unlucky. Oh, good effort, unlucky. You've got 20 seconds left, nice. Nice, oh, 15 seconds. You're on for the record here, if you keep up this pace. Five, four, three, two, one. Right. That was chaos, um, I think that was six judging by the reaction, maybe five, 
Again, have to go to VAR, but um, I'm sure it'll pop up on the screen. So if you think you can beat that, potentially the new high score, then let us know, get in touch with the Kent FA, and we'll be down to visit you. Thank you very much. And VAR's confirmed that the score is six. Congratulations, Hearn Bay ladies under 18s. You go to the top of the crossbar challenge leaderboard. Great stuff. And that's pretty much it for the fourth episode of the Kent Football Show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, make sure you smash that like button and make sure you're subscribing to the Kent FA's YouTube channel. Keep your eyes peeled for more episodes. Episode five comes out in May. Thank you to our sponsor as well, Kent Reliance, and to everybody who featured in this episode. We'll see you next time.